praise you, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Okay, the Word of God. Praise Amen. God. Amen. And today the message will be about the temple and a baptism. The temple of God. The temple of God and baptism. And baptism. Okay. Hallelujah. But before I start, I will just say that uh, you can find other messages like this on uh, www.trustchrist.faith or www.lovejesus.today or at YouTube. Thank you, Lord. So the message will be about the temple of God and baptism. As we know, there is a temple of God in heaven. God's real temple is in heaven. God lives in heaven. And how far heaven is away, we don't know. Uh, but then God had an image of his temple on the earth. And that was the temple that was in Jerusalem. That was kind of this God's second temple where he lived. He lived in heaven and then he also lived in the temple in Jerusalem. Solomon's temple in Jerusalem, yeah. right? Yeah. So that was God's second temple, his second habitation, and that was on the earth. And that was uh, as long as Israel, he was in a covenant with Israel. But then there is a third temple that came at the time when Israel was in a covenant with God. And that was Jesus, because Jesus, he was a temple of God. He was a human body, but God lived in him. Or he lived, God lived in a human body. God became man and lived among us. So he, he became a temple. Like uh, in the beginning with Moses and Israel, God lived in the temple, but God, he was such a great God at some time, one time he, he spoke with fire on the mountain and Israel could hear his voice, right? And it was so terrifying to hear the voice of God that they, they asked to not have to hear his voice anymore. That, uh, how was it that Moses was going to speak to them? So this was a terrifying thing to experience the presence of God and his voice and the fire and the thunder and not even a cow, not an animal, even not, nothing could come near that mountain or it would die. It was a terrifying experience for them, I believe. So that they couldn't stand his presence. And even God says that no one can see God and live. Like the presence of God must be so terrifying that no one can see the fullness of God and, and still live. But then, suddenly God decided to become a man and live among us. And that's amazing. God himself could make habitation in a man. And then Jesus, he became a temple before God. God lived in him. So then the temple of God was not only in heaven, it was not only the, the building, the temple of God with the Ark of the Covenant, but it had expanded. God's habitation had expanded to know also be in Jesus. Jesus was God that lived among us as a man. And suddenly a man could approach Jesus. They could approach God. They could talk to him. They could uh, touch him. He could talk to them in a normal voice. It was not fire and, no. uh, and thunder mm -hmm. and a terrifying experience. No, he was like a man, a humble man that come among us that we could approach. He had the wisdom of God and many people didn't recognize him because he was a man. Yeah. And uh, he just had uh, amazing words. And he spoke in figures of speech. And he did miracles and signs and wonders. And if they really had a heart for God and, his, and their eyes were open, they would recognize that this must be God. That this must be God's hand. Because no one can do such things and not be of God, right? Mm -hmm. 
I think it was one one man that was healed that said that that he, 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 no man this is unheard of no man could do this and not be of God uh, like he was of God but that was the third temple but now each of us that love Jesus with all their heart have become a temple of God no his operation we can say God's operation has expanded dramatically and every person at one point it was only Jesus and then you had a physical temple and then you have, of course had a temple in heaven but then you had a living temple that was Jesus but when Jesus went to heaven the upper God's operation expanded dramatically hallelujah and that is wonderful suddenly each of us became God's temple like similar to Jesus one time it was only Jesus one time it was only the mountain uh, certain place you should come and, and, and worship and that was in the temple in Jerusalem um, the prayer may be directed to Jerusalem and then at one point it was only Jesus and everybody had to go to Jesus to be healed and yeah. <clears throat> to hear the Word of God and but know his operation no the operation of God has expanded no each of us can be the temple of God God can live in us and that is wonderful and that is written in 1 Corinthians 3 16 I think <laughs> 1 Corinthians 3, 16. Do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? And verse 17. If anyone defiles the temple of God, God will destroy him. For the temple of God is holy which temple you are. Hallelujah! So, Jesus said in John 16, 7, John 16, 7, Hallelujah. He's talking about the Holy Spirit. And he was talking to the disciples about going away, that he was going to die and he was going to rose again and, and things like that. And then he's saying in verse 7, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the Helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. So the disciples were kind of sad about Jesus telling them that he was to go away, he was going to die, he was going to... And the sadness filled their heart. But then he's saying that it is to their advantage that he's going away. Because if he did not go away, he could not send the Holy Spirit. If he did not go away, we could not become the temple of God or God could not live in us if he didn't go away and what did he mean by that yeah if Jesus had remained on the earth then he wouldn't have died for our sins right and God could never live in us because we didn't receive his righteousness because God, God can't live in us in, in a temple that is unholy and full of sin he can't live there so Jesus had to die for us. He had to die for our sin and all the other things he did. He finished the work. He died for our sin. He rose from the dead. He went back into the, 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 the real temple in heaven with his blood. The temple of God in heaven. And then he purchased an eternal salvation for us. He purchased righteousness for us. And when we now receive him, God 
can move into our heart and live in our heart. And we are also now a real temple. We are not just a physical building where God lives. We are a real temple of God. But God lives in us. He lives in the temple in heaven, but he also lives in us, a living temple. We are living temples of God, like Jesus. <laughs> Jesus was a, an amazing example of being the temple of God. But he had to die for this experience of being the temple of God to spread to all humanity. For the possibility to come to all people. He had to go away. Almost like a seed had to be had to go in the ground and die for there to come new life. And for the the little seed to become a big plant. And that was Jesus. He was the seed that had to die for us. And from that seed came uh, a plant that is amazing. From that seed is growing a tree that will fill everything. Hallelujah! So Jesus, to make us become the temple of God, or, or we had the possibility, well, I believe the plan was for Adam and Eve to become, the, to be the temple of God, that God was to live in them. They had they had the possibility in them because we as human beings we have been made in the image of God and I believe uh, one of these uh, abilities that we have is that God can live within us we are of his kind we are of his kind and we have the capacity for God to live in us and I believe Adam and Eve had that capacity also and I believe that if they had eaten from the tree of life that God would have lived within them. They would have received eternal life and lived forever. That would be the the benefit of that. But they sinned. God never moved into their heart. He never moved into that temple of Adam and Eve. Because before they came to that point, they sinned. And when they had sinned, God could not move in because God hates sin. God cannot be in fellowship with sin, right? So he could never move in. He never lived in Adam and Eve. And he never lived in any man up till the day Jesus died on the cross. I don't think he lived in uh, David or in... Uh, or in uh, Elijah or in Enoch or uh, he didn't he he was with them but he wasn't in them and Jesus say, said also to the disciples that the Holy Spirit is with you but shall be in you he said to the disciples that is written in uh, I don't know exactly where but John 15 or 16 somewhere we, we, uh, we can find that later he is with you but he shall be in you and he couldn't be in them until Jesus had finished the work on the cross, become the sacrifice, the eternal sacrifice for sin, where he would take our sin upon himself and give us his righteousness. Because God could not live in us until the day that we were righteous. So Jesus, he came to dis first destroy the works of the devil, the works of sin. Uh, and he destroyed not only sin so that God could live, us, but live in us, but destroyed all the works of the devil. Everything that was the cause of the sin of Adam and Eve, everything the devil caused or brought into humanity because of Adam and Eve's sin, all of that Jesus took upon himself. He, he, he destroyed all the consequences of the fall of Adam and Eve. And that's written in 1 John 3, 8. 1 John 3, 8. He who sins is of the <coughs> devil, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested, 
that he might destroy the works of the devil. So Jesus was manifested to destroy the works of the devil. And then he died on the cross, he was buried, and he rose from the dead. And as he did that, he completed the work. He went back to heaven, he sprinkled his blood on the different vessels in the real temple of God in heaven, in God's habitation in heaven, and he, he purchased an eternal salvation for us. And then, the operation was completed, and He could send the Holy Spirit. No, the Spirit could move into each of our hearts, because no, we could receive His righteousness. And there were already some people ready in Jerusalem that had received the Word of Jesus. They were ready. They, had, they, they were prepared for the Holy Spirit. Jesus had walked with them for three years. They were prepared. They loved Jesus with all their hearts. And when they loved Jesus, they were ready for the Holy Spirit. They were ready for forgiveness. And they received it. How did they receive the righteousness of God? They loved Jesus with all their heart. And they received the righteousness of God by the Holy Spirit. God sent the Holy Spirit from heaven. Then they received the real righteousness. Until that day, the, the righteousness had been kind of a shadow of what was to come. They had to depend on the old law of Moses, on sacrificing animals and stuff. That was the kind of righteousness they were depending on until Jesus had completed the work. But now He's sending the Holy Spirit from heaven. And what is the first thing the Holy Spirit is doing? He's baptizing them. The Holy Spirit is coming from heaven and He's baptizing them in the Spirit. They're baptized in the Spirit. They're cleansed. You see, baptism is a cleansing bath. And when the Holy Spirit is coming like a rushing wind, the first thing the Holy Spirit is doing is to cleanse them. It's to baptize them in the Spirit. To cleanse them from all sin. And then God moves into their hearts and He lives within them. Hallelujah. You see, to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, to be cleansed from all our sins. We need to receive love for Jesus. And we need to love God with all our heart. That's a one and the same thing. We need to love God with all our heart. We need to receive Jesus, receive love for Jesus. That, the disciples had that in their hearts already. They had received love for Jesus. They were committed to His Word. They believed in Jesus, and then they were born of God. But they were not born of God until the day the Holy Spirit came back from heaven. But before they were born of God, what happened? Yeah, the Holy Spirit filled the whole room where they were, and they were baptized in the Spirit. They were, they were washed clean by the Spirit. And then the Holy Spirit moved, moved into their heart and God lived within them. I can read John 1.12. John Hallelujah. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, to those who believe 
in his name, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. So to receive God, to receive Jesus, to believe in, his, in Him, is the one and the same thing. And to believe in Jesus is the same as to follow Jesus with all our heart. Amen? You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your mind and all your strength. That is the first commandment. And that was the commandment under the law of Moses also. And the disciples, they loved Jesus. But that is also a commandment today. It's, a, it's something that is, must be in us to receive Jesus. Or to have God live within us. We must love God with all our heart. And that is written in Matthew 22, 37-38, but we don't need to look it up. We need to love God with all our heart. Matthew? Hmm? Matthew 17? Matthew, uh, seven, Matthew 22, okay. verse 37 till 38. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and all your mind, and all your strength. And that is the same commandment today because it's written in uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 10 to 12, about those who did not love, receive love for the truth in their heart. We are called to not love only the Word of God, but the truth of the Word of God. The truth. Second Thessalonians. Did I say th Second Thessalonians? Or yeah. first? Second, Second Thessalonians. Chapter 2, verse 10 to 12. Oh, from verse 9. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan with all power, signs, and lying wonders, and with all unrighteous deception among those who perish, because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this reason God will send them strong delusion that they should believe the lie, that they all may be condemned who did not believe the truth. You see, Jesus is the truth. And now to not follow the truth, to not be committed to the truth, and that is of course the truth of the Word of God. Your Word is truth. The Word of God is truth. And if you are not committed to the truth, we are not committed to Jesus. But we need to be committed to the truth of the Word of God. Not only the literal Word of God, but the truth of the Word of God. Hallelujah. Committed to the truth then we are baptized in the Spirit. When our heart is good, when our heart, the, uh, the heart of the, the, the eye, it's written, when your eye is good, and I believe that is the eye of the heart, that is when your heart is good, then our whole body becomes full of light. Then we receive His righteousness, we receive the Holy Spirit. Or the first thing, before we receive the Holy Spirit, to live within us, we are baptized in the Spirit. And that's written in 1 Corinthians 12, 13. 1 Corinthians 12, 13. For by one Spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free, and have all been made to drink into one spirit. You see, <coughs> that is what is happening. When we become members of the body of Christ, we are baptized in the spirit to become members of the body of Christ. We are baptized into one body. We bapt it's written in verse 12 in the same chapter. For as the body is one and has many members, but all the members of that one body being many, are one body, so also is Christ. So the body of Christ has many members. And when we become, receive the Spirit of God in our heart, then we become a member of the body of Christ. But we are baptized in the Spirit to become a member. So the first thing that is happening is a cleansing bath by the Spirit to cleanse us from all sin, 
so that we receive the righteousness of God, and then the Holy Spirit moves into a holy temple, a righteous temple. God cannot live with sin. He cannot live with sin. First, we need His righteousness. First, we need the cleansing bath of the Spirit. And then the Spirit moves in. And when the Spirit moves in, it is God living in us. It is Christ living in us. Jesus, God, the Father, Jesus, and the Spirit are one. God lives in us. And when God lives in us, it is the Father the Son, and the Spirit that lives within us. Amen? Hallelujah! So, what is happening in the baptism? In the baptism, we are kind of, we are baptized into the finished work of Christ. Into His death, into His burial, and into His resurrection. We are baptized into the experience of the victory of Christ. And from that we receive His righteousness. That is what we are doing, because it is the same symbolism that is in water baptism. In water baptism we are confessed that we have died with Jesus, we have been buried with Jesus, and we have risen with Jesus. In baptism. The water baptism is symbolizing the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the cleansing bath of the Holy Spirit that happened the day we were born of God. Amen? Amen. And that's written in, um, in uh, Romans 6, 3-11. Romans 6, 3-11. Or do you not know that as many of us as were <coughs> baptized into Christ Jesus, were baptized into His death, therefore we were buried with Him through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also, so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been united together in the likeness of His death, certainly we also shall be in the likeness of His resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves of sin. For he who has died has been freed from sin. Now if we died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death that he died, he died to sin once for all, but the life that he lives, he lives to God. Likewise you also reckon yourself to be dead indeed to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. We were baptized into the experience of what Jesus did on the cross. Hallelujah. Through His death and resurrection. And it is important for us to understand that the baptism of the Spirit is a cleansing bath. It is not the day you receive the fullness. It's not the day you're filled with the Spirit. It's the day you're cleansed by the Spirit. It's the cleansing bath. That is the baptism of the Spirit. But after you have been baptized, like in the upper room with the disciples, there were also filled with the Holy Spirit. But the filling of the Holy Spirit comes after being baptized with the Spirit. Because after you're baptized, God moves in and lives within you, and then He can fill you with the Spirit. And you see also in other places in the Bible that if after the disciples were baptized in water, after they had received God, the apostles prayed for them not to be baptized in the Spirit, but they prayed for them to be filled with the Spirit. Amen? They were prayed to be filled with the Spirit. And they spoke with tongues and they prophesied. And then they were filled with the Spirit. But those are two different things. 
to be baptized in the Spirit and to be filled with the Spirit are two different things. To be baptized in the Spirit is done in the same time or right before you are born of God. You're baptized in the Spirit to be born of God or to become a member of Jesus. You see, we agree that you become a man, the day we become born of God, that's the day we become a member of the body of Christ, right? Yeah. Yeah. And we are baptized in the Spirit to become one body with Jesus. So that's, we are baptized in the Spirit to become born of God. And later, or at the same time, we can be filled with the Spirit because God now lives within us. So baptism is a cleansing bath where God will enter His most holy place within us. In the temple, with us being His temple, there is a holy place in us, in our spirit. Within us is a place where God can live. Amen? If there is a place in us where God can live, then there is, and we are in the likeness of His temple in Jerusalem or in His temple in heaven, we are built in the likeness of His temple. Not only in the likeness of God, but in the likeness of His temple, of His habitation. Then there is a, holy pl a most holy place within us. There is a most holy place. Maybe there is an older court and then a holy place, and then a most holy place. Maybe the body is the holy place, the, the outer court that people can touch. And then our soul is the most holy, it is the holy place, and then our spirit is the most holy place. Amen? Amen. <laughs> and we can read from uh, uh, Colossians one twenty seven. Colossians one twenty seven. To them God willed to make known what are the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ in you, the hope of glory. That is the mystery for now. That's the mystery of this generation. That's the mystery of the new covenant. That is Christ in you. In us. That's the mystery. That has not been revealed before. Maybe the angels didn't know it. I didn't understand it. That Christ was going to live within us. That was the mystery. It's a mystery that suddenly was revealed. <clears throat> and that is Christ in us. <laughs> Hallelujah. But this is very interesting. That we are the temple of God. And God lives in the most holy place within us. Then for us to utilize or for us to, how can I say it, to utilize the possibility with God living in us. You see the verse a potential, that was the word. There is a potential in a temple where God lives. It is a potential of releasing the very power, the full power, the power and the ability and the strength and the quality of God in us. You see, that was a there was a potential in the temple of Jerusalem if they did things correctly in the temple 
they could release the power of God. They could access God. God could manifest His power in helping Israel in many different ways. There is the potential of God. God in us can be exposed if we behave in a correct manner. So with God live, living in us, how do we behave? To, for God to be exposed, for God's power to be exposed, for His presence to be manifested, for His power to be manifested in us. How do we behave with our temple? It must be similar to how the priests operated in the temple in Jerusalem. Or how God and the angels and Jesus is operating in the temple in heaven. It must be similar. That's why we should not be careless about this temple. Now, when we look at the temple in Jerusalem, what they did in the temple. What did they do? Well, first, before they entered, the priests. And you see, we are not only a temple of God, but we have been made priests. And that's written in Revelation 1. Revelation 1.6. And has made us kings and priests to his God and Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Hallelujah. We can read also verse 5. And from Jesus Christ, I can read from verse 4. John to the seven churches which are in Asia. Grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come, and from the seven spirits who are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth, to him who loved us and washed us from our sins in his blood, and has made us kings and priests to his God and Father, to him, who, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. You see, I have to just mention this, that it is the Spirit baptizing us and washing us clean. But it's through the blood of Jesus that we are washed clean. We are washed clean through the blood of Jesus. But it is by the Spirit this experience is given to us. The experience of the blood, cleansing of the blood of Jesus is given by the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And then it will continue to be, uh, to be, how do you, what word do I choose in English? To be um, given to us by the Spirit. The cleansing of the blood is in the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. And by the Spirit. <laughs> Hallelujah. So we have been made priests. So if we are priests, we are a temple, but at the same time we are priests. How do we operate with our temple? To please God in the most holy place. So He is pleased. So He will be manifest. His power, His presence. What did priests did in the temple? They were eating bread, show bread. They were eating bread. That's a symbol of Jesus Christ, the living bread. And to eat bread was a symbol of doing the will of God. That's Jesus said, I am the bread of life. And, uh, and he's saying that to eat, eat the bread of God is to do the will of God. 
I'm not going to read all the scriptures. But in the holy place there were also oil. They had to make sure there were oil in the lampstand. Oil. And they had to make sure the fire was burning. And that is with us also. We need to make sure the fire is burning in us. That we have oil on our life. That How do we do that? Yes, that's by remaining committed to God. Fully committed to Him. Then we will have the Holy Spirit and the fire will burn. And they were offering incense to God. And that's prayers. And they had to be have holy clothes on. Holy clothes. They had been dressed in Jesus for the full potential of their service to be manifest. They had to be holy. They had to keep the fire burning. They had to keep offering incense. They had to keep praying. To offer incense before God. They had to keep the oil in the lampstand. And they had to keep eating bread. They were eating bread regularly in the holy place. This is a symbol of what we, how we should live and how we should operate. We need to keep being committed to God. And by being committed to God, to His Word, and prayer. We need to be in prayer, and in the Word, and committed to God. This way we shall keep the fire burning, and the oil shall be upon us. And we need to be righteous, that's the first thing. For God to be able to live in us, we have to have His righteousness. We need to sacrifice. The, the, the priests are sacrificing um, lambs and different uh, animals uh, on the altar. So we need to live in the righteousness of God for God to live in us. We need to remain obedient to God. And then the, 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 the priests, they were clothed in holy clothes for the full potential of God to be manifested we also need to be dressed in holy clothes it looks like of course we receive his grace by righteousness by the sacrifice of Jesus alone but for the full potential of God living, of the temple, for the full, full potential to be manifested in us and through us, full potential of God, of the full potential of being an image of the temple or being the image of God, will be released through holiness, through wearing holy clothes. That's why we should focus on putting to death the deeds of the body. But as we do what we are supposed to do in the temple, by being obedient to God, by being committed to Him, by offering up prayers, by believing in God and trusting Him, offering up our faith to God and trusting Him, by doing that we are putting to death the deeds of the body, the old man. And as we are putting to death the old man, we are putting on the clothes of Christ, the holiness of God, the holiness of Jesus. And the more we put on Christ, the more of His presence will be manifest. And as we are fully dressed in Jesus and becoming like Him and we are holy as He is holy, then the full potential of God may be displayed through all life. So that's why we should keep our focus on knowing the truth, on prayer, on obedience, on walking in the Spirit and truth, 
And by that walk, we shall, by the Spirit, put to death the deeds of the body, and we shall put on Christ. And as we do that, as we put on Christ and put off the, the deeds of the body, we shall expose and display more of the power of God. God shall be able to use us more, to be manifested more through His temple. And it's written in Romans 3, 8, 13. Romans 8, 13. Romans 8, 13. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. Hallelujah. And then, in John 8, 32, John 8, 32, And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. You see, when we know the truth, when we learn the truth, we eat we obey the Word of God, we, we know the truth, the, through the truth we shall, it shall make us free. We shall put, we shall come free from this body of sin. We shall be, truly be freed from the deeds of the body. And we shall put on Christ. The truth shall set us free. But we, when we know the truth, we will, and we obey the truth, and we walk in the truth, and we walk in the Spirit, we shall put on Christ. The truth will be a part of us, and we shall walk more in the practical holiness in life. Hallelujah. So the more we are in the truth, the more we are in line with the truth, the more freedom we have. And then in John 4, 32, John 4, 32, there he's saying, and that is about the eating the bread, the eating of the show bread in the temple, that, that's a symbol, symbolizing the eating of Jesus, eating Jesus' body. But he said to them, I have food to eat of which you do not know. Therefore the disciples said to one another, Has anyone brought him anything to eat? Jesus said to them, My food is to do the will of him who sent me, and to finish his work. This is to eat the body of Christ. That's the food. That's eating Jesus. He is the bread of life. That's eating the bread of life. That's to do his will and to finish his work. Hallelujah. And then in the temple we also do prayer. Philippians 4 6. Philippians 4 6. <clears throat> Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. So what is the result? What is the result of us living like this? of being priests, of being clothed in holy clothes, in offering prayer and supplication, in doing the will of God, obeying God, being committed to Him, living in His righteousness, living under the sacrifice of uh, the alt altar, which is the sacrifice of Christ, being fully committed to Him, obeying Him, uh, keeping the fire burning, keeping, uh, keeping the oil in our life, 
what will be the result? The result will be that we will be formed, we will harvest the potential, more of the potential of God in us. We will be formed into, you see in the temple, in the holy place, there were, there were a lampstand, seven, a lamp, a lamp uh, stand with seven branches. And in those branches you had to keep oil and you keep, had to keep the fire. But this candlestick is symbolizing Christ in us, is symbolizing, is symbolizing us and, uh, as a church. And it's symbolizing us. It's it is made of hammered gold. And it's symbolizing the character of God. Uh, to say it really short, the, camera, the character of God in us is obtained by trusting God in the midst of opposition it is hammered it is it is is built the character of god is built in us through pressure through believing in him praising him trusting him praying to him uh, obeying god <coughs> in the midst of pressure the pressure of sin <coughs> the pressure of the sin nature we keep believing in God. We keep believing in God. We keep praying to Him. We keep trusting His Word. Through the pressure of sin, through the pressure of circumstances, through the pressure of persecution, through many difficult circumstances, we keep believing Him, believing in the things we don't see, praying and trusting and praising Him, obeying Him, and we keep the oil in our life, we keep the fire burning, and through that the character of God is built into our life through pressure and we become a lampstand of hammered gold. I believe that's what the hammered gold is symbolizing, is symbolizing the character of Christ in us, and it is built in us through pressure, through believing and trusting God through pressure. Because we do, we do go through pressure. We have, uh, we start out with the pressure of, uh, of of sin, the experience of the sin nature, the, the pressure of circumstances, to believe in things we don't see, uh, and holding on to our faith, the pressure of persecution. All people that will live uh, righteous before, uh, will live a holy life, shall be persecuted. It's written. We are persecuted of of spirits. Pressure of spirits, pressure of sin, pressure of uh, and circumstances. Uh, and through that, the character of God is formed in us as we are holding on to faith, obeying Him, Him praising Him, trusting Him, praying to Him. Hallelujah. Through the fire, through the Spirit, we shall then put off the old man, put on the new man, and the character of God will be built in us, and through that the potential of God in the holy temple, in the God in the most holy place, will be manifest and, and, and released and exposed through us. God can then use us as we are set free by the Spirit and by the truth. Hallelujah! So we become hammered gold. We become like Jesus more and more. And we're putting on more holy clothes. We're coming more in line with how we are supposed to operate in this temple. And as we come more and more in line, more and more of the potential in the temple will be manifested. I believe. There was potential in the temple in Jerusalem also. But at times... They filled the holy place with un unclean things. Israel filled the holy temple, the holy place in the temple, with unclean things. They put other gods in there, the sinful things. They were committing adultery. There were many unclean things happening in the temple. And God could not be pleased. His cloud of holiness could not fall on the temple because of all the wickedness that was done in the temple. 
but when they cleansed off the evil and the wicked things and they become in line with the purpose of God for the temple, then God's purpose could be manifested and His powers could be exposed and He could bless Israel in a mighty way. But when it was filled with wickedness, then curses came also upon Israel. When the temple was filled with wickedness and unclean things, the, po the, the, the potential of the temple could not be, uh, be exposed, could not be manifested to bless Israel. And Israel was not blessed because the temple was not clean. And the priests were not operating in accordance in line with how they should operate. Because there was a purpose of the temple that was for the blessing of Israel. And the, the priests had to offer sacrifices and things in the correct way for, the, for, the, for, the, for God to be pleased. <coughs> so he could bless them. And then certain times in the history, they woke up to the truth and they started to clean the temple. And, and God uh, could then save Israel. I believe. I, I, I get the story uh, right here. That's uh, how I believe it was. So when we come more and more in line with God, we have His righteousness. But if we are full of uh, deeds of the body, the unclean things, and the, or we can be under His righteousness, we can be under the sacrifice of Christ, but we may not have on the correct clothes as priests yet and uh, we can uh, have the grace of God and be under his righteousness but as we put on the holy clothes of a priest we will more and more operate in line with how things are supposed to be and God will be pleased with how things are done and he can bless us and the church in a stronger way because we are operating more and more correctly in line with how we are supposed to operate as priests in his temple. Amen? Amen. Amen. And through us operating correctly, we shall experience more and more, I believe, of the power of God. And it's written in Luke 10, 19. Luke 10, 19. <laughs> Hallelujah. Behold, I give you the authority or the power to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Hallelujah. And finally, before I end this message, I will also just mention shortly that baptism can also speak about heaven itself. Baptism is a cleansing bath to enter the prom before we enter the promised land, right? The promised land, uh, the promised land is Jesus in us, entering into Christ. That's a promised land. We go through His death, through His burial through His resurrection, and we enter the promised land, right? Yeah. We enter Christ. Yeah, amen. Heaven, in us. Amen. In us, the kingdom of God, in us. Through baptism, right? Yeah. Through the baptism of the Spirit, or symbolized by the baptism in water, we enter the promised land. And I believe this could also speak of heaven itself. Because <clears throat> even Israel had to be baptized through Moses to enter the promised land. When they walked out of Egypt, they were baptized to, through to Moses. They were baptized to Moses through water. They went through the Red Sea. 
They were baptized to Moses. He symbolized, he's a symbolism of Jesus. And they also were baptized to Joshua. When they, before they entered the Promised Land, they had to also walk through Jordan, wasn't it? And they were baptized to go into the Promised Land. And I believe this is symbolizing heaven itself. For us to enter, when we, the time is uh, ready for us to enter heaven, we go from this earth to heaven. I believe we will go through water. We will baptize through Jesus. We will go, it's all this water that we're talking in the Bible, the baptism of the Spirit, the baptism of water, the, the going through the Red Sea before they enter the Promised Land. is symbolizing heaven itself. And also the temple, before they entered the temple of God in Jerusalem, they had to go through the cleansing bath. There was a big a sea that was standing on 12 oxen, and they had to be washed clean through this water before they entered the temple of God. Before we enter the temple of God in heaven, I believe that we will go with Jesus through water before we enter the temple. Before we go through this universe, and the end of this universe, there will be water. And before we enter heaven, we will go through that water and enter heaven. I believe that. It's written in, even in the Bible that uh, when God created the heavens and the earth, and water covered the earth, and then He separated the earth under the firmament from the water above the firmament. And I believe the firmament is the universe. Because he put stars and moon and sun in the firmament. And the water that is above the firmament, that is the water we have to pass through before we come into the abode of God himself in heaven. Hallelujah. It looks like that. I can't say it really is like that, but it looks like that. And to me, it's a wonderful symbolism. Everything is symbolizing God and heaven and the kingdom of God. Everything is, 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 is so amazing. And if we can understand everything correctly, wow, we can see God among us. I don't say I have reached it, but I'm striving. I'm, I'm striving to reach the goal. I'm, I'm, I'm striving to put off the old man. I, I'm believing God. I'm, I, I'm fighting to keep my faith through pressure, through all kinds of pressure in my life. I, 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 I'm, I, I'm trying to obey God and to know the truth and to, to, to uh, by the Spirit, mortify the deeds of the body and to become more like Christ, to put on Christ, to put off the old man, to put on Christ. And But I believe that through this process we shall experience more and more of the power and the presence of God and I can testify that I in my life have experienced as I grow with Christ more and more of the power and the presence of Christ in my life but I'm not at the end I'm on my way Amen Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, Amen. we praise Amen. you for your word. Amen. We thank you and Amen. praise you. May you make us ready and may, may you make us able and may Amen. you teach us. And we thank you, Lord, for the Holy Spirit Amen. who will teach us all things Amen. and who will lead us into the whole truth. Amen? Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And more messages like this you can find on www.trustchrist.faith www lovejesus.today or at YouTube. And finally, please do not forget to support this ministry so that we can reach out to many. In Jesus' name, amen.